What is up, you two? Welcome back. Today, we're going to be in the book of 2 Thessalonians, and we're going to be finishing off this book with chapter 3. So, guys, I'm just going to, you know, redo the whole chapter, and then I'm going to share uh, the notes that I've written down. Um, and I just pray and I hope this message is an encouragement to you guys and it blesses you. So let's start off with chapter 3. The title of this is Living in the Light of Christ's Return. Request for prayer. As for other matters, brothers and sisters, pray for us that the message of the Lord may spread rapidly and be honored, just as it was with you, and pray that we may be delivered from wicked and evil people. For not everyone has faith, but the Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. Amen? We have confidence in the Lord that you are doing and will continue to do the things we command. May the Lord direct your hearts into God's love in Christ's perseverance. Warning against idleness. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we command you, brothers and sisters, to keep away from every believer who is idle and disruptive and does not live according to the teaching you receive from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to follow our example. We were not idle when we were with you, nor did we eat anyone's food without paying for it. On the contrary, we worked night and day, laboring and toiling so that we would not be a burden to any of you. We did this not because we do not have the right to such help, but in order to offer ourselves as a model for you to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this rule. The one who was unwilling to work shall not eat. We hear that some among you are idle and disruptive. They are not busy. They are busy bodies. Such people we command and urge in the Lord Jesus Christ to settle down and earn the food they eat. And as for you, brothers and sisters, never tire of doing what is good. Take special note of anyone who does not obey our instruction in the letter. Do not associate with them in order that they may feel ashamed. Yet do not regard them as an enemy, but warn them as you would a fellow believer. Final greetings. And may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with you all. I, Paul, write this greeting in my own hand, which is the distinguishing mark in all my letters. This is how I write. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. all right, guys, that was chapter three. So now let's move into the notes. So as we see in the beginning of chapter three, we see that Satan will work through people, okay? They will be wicked and evil, right? We got to know that not everyone has faith like we as Christians do. So we must be prepared for that. We must be prepared. It's very important to understand that because, you know, when we're preaching the gospel, all right, when we're sharing the good news, there's going to be people that, that, that have a hatred for God, right? Come at you. You're going to be persecuted, but stay strong because God is with us. He is faithful and he will protect us from the evil one. Amen. The Lord will strengthen us and protect us. Remember that. In this chapter, we see that Paul warns against idleness. Right? He tells us to keep away from believers who are idle and disruptive and does not live according to the teaching. So what idle means, guys, it's laziness. It's inactivity. But why were these believers being lazy? Why were they inactive? So let's go to 3, 6 through 15 in my study Bible. I just want to read what it says because I love what it says. It says, some people in the Thessalonian church were falsely teaching that because Christ would return any day, people should set aside their responsibilities, quit work, do no future planning, and just wait for the Lord. But their lack of activity only led them into sin. They became a burden to the church, which was supporting them. They wasted time that could have been used for helping others, and they became busy bodies. These church members may have thought that they were being more spiritual by not working, but Paul tells them to be responsible and get back to work. Being ready for Christ means obeying him in every area of life. Because we know that Christ is coming, we must live in such a way that our faith and daily practice will please him when he arrives so basically what these believers were doing 
they heard false teaching that Jesus was going to come at any moment. So when they heard this, they quit their jobs, right? They became inactive in the church. They became lazy. They became idle. And that is dangerous. What Paul is saying is, guys, never stop. Never grow weary in doing good. Never grow weary in doing good. We must finish the race. We must fight the good fight, right? We must not give up, right? We, how do we, like I said in the other video, how do we want to be found when Jesus comes? I don't know about you, but I want to be found doing his work, right? In prayer, worshiping him. I want to be found with my heart, right? Amen? Amen. And, and some of these people, they weren't working, so they weren't able to make money, so they couldn't buy food, right? Paul says, Paul urges them to follow his example, right? As we see that he said that he worked night and day, laboring and toiling so that he wouldn't be a burden to any of the, of the believers at this church. Paul says, follow my example. Work hard to provide for yourself and your family. Don't depend on anyone, right? And we see, he says, the one who is unwilling to work shall not eat, shall not eat. Paul urges them to settle down, settle down and earn the food that you eat. So important. We must never tire, guys. As I said before, we must never tire of doing good works because we know that when Christ comes, he will reward each person according to their deeds. So let's not grow weary, guys. Let's not grow weary. Paul says to not associate with the unbelievers in order that they may feel ashamed. In order that they may feel ashamed. Now, this isn't harsh or cruel. What Paul is trying to do um, is in hopes of doing this, they would repent, right? They would repent. Paul is showing tough love here, all right? And, and he's doing this in order in hopes of a repentant heart. Right, Paul wants these believers to uh, begin working again, right? To work um, with their own hands, to work hard and not depend on anyone else and be a burden to other believers. And lastly, this chapter, it, it encourages us to, to live responsibly, right? In spite of the difficult circumstances we may face, right? This church, it, it was facing persecution, right? It was facing you know, difficult times. And what Paul was trying to do is encourage them. Keep working for the Lord. Don't give up. Just because uh, we, we see that right now, we see that the time is near. We see that Jesus Christ could be coming at any moment. But that shouldn't stop us from doing the work that God has called us to do. Amen. We must continue. We must continue to fight. We must continue to run the race. Continue to persevere in the faith. So guys, that is all I have for chapter 3 of 2 Thessalonians. So I hope this message, right? I hope this video was able to bless you and encourage you. Um, if you're watching this video and you uh, want me to read uh, any other books, just drop it down below. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel to stay tuned for more content. I love you guys. Peace.